working in the creative business. Oh, great. Who has children too? Okay. So um, I guess uh, everybody has some topic about children and um, I uh, came to um, my studies with um, design studies with already one child. So um, I always had the topic child and children within my design thinking. Um, I'm going to talk about relationships, um, I'm going to talk about interaction, I'm going to talk about, um, I'm not going to talk about my past, I'm not going to talk about your past, and uh, I think, um, what did I put oh, the sorry. sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about the relationship from the very beginning. And childhood means the lifespan from uh, zero, from birth to 10 years old. Um, who cares? Um, children nowadays have a different um, response to what's happening around them. So, um, in, well, my childhood, nobody really um, took care about what we thought as children. And, uh, the response from, from our parents w was not as much as today. Um, today everybody is um, talking very much with the children and we know from psychology that um, talking with the children from beginning, from the beginning is very important to um, build the brain, to um, yeah, communicate and to interact and build social connections. So, um, my topic, what I like to do um, with my design thinking is to recreate learning and um, education in itself. So um, I come to that later on. Um, I found this um, on a fair in um, southern Bavaria and it was the topic about education and how um, business could get involved in, in <coughs> education more so the children would not come out of school to um, not actually use it, their knowledge but um, get more uh, curious about what business is really about. So um, I'm going to start with a video and um, <coughs> it's interesting just um, to, to see it's an experiment and um, how the interaction between the baby and the mother actually is full of insights, can be full of insights. So, thank you. Babies this young are extremely responsive to the emotions and the reactivity and the social interaction that they get from the world around them. This is something that we started studying 30, 40 years ago, when people didn't think that infants could engage in social interaction. In the still face experiment, what the mother did was she sits down and she's playing with her baby who's about a year of age. I need my girl. Oh. And she gives a greeting to the baby, the baby gives a greeting back to her. Yeah. This baby starts pointing at different places in the world and the mother's trying to engage her and play with her. They're working to coordinate their emotions and their intentions, what they want to do in the world. And that's really what the baby is used to. And then we ask the mother to not respond to the baby. The baby very quickly picks up on this. And then she uses all of her abilities to try and get the mother back. 
She smiles at the mother. She points because she's used to the mother looking where she points. The baby puts both hands up in front of her and says, what's happening here? She makes that screechy sound at the mother, like, come on, why aren't we doing this? <laughs> Even in this two minutes when they don't get the normal reaction, they react with negative emotions, they turn away, they feel the stress of it, they actually may lose control of their posture because of the stress that they're experiencing. The good is that normal stuff that goes on, that we all do with our kids. The bad is when something bad happens, but the infant can overcome it. After all, when you stop the still face, the mother and the baby start to play again. The ugly is when you don't give the child any chance to get back to the good. There's no reparation, and they're stuck in that really ugly. Okay. What I learned about that was um, there are so many varieties in responding, responding to, to a child's behavior um, or vice versa. The child is responding to a variety of, of um, actions of, of, of the mother. And um, I think what, what can be learned here is the expectation that's rising when nothing happens. And um, thinking of customer experience, for example, when the customer stands somewhere and waits and gets no response to anything, it's almost the same thing happening. We don't recognize it anymore because we, we used to it, but uh, actually it's the same procedure. We get nervous, we don't really know what to do, and uh, actually get negative emotions about it. Um, so I think that's a good insight for customer experience um, research too. Um, I, I try to, actually it, it's a story from, from my own background. Um, uh, my children, I, I tried to, to raise the frustration tolerance. And uh, when they were sitting in their, in their chair, children's chair while I was cooking, um, they, um, I, I didn't react of, on what they're doing. And when they uh, expected response from me, um, it was, um, well, sometimes I had to cook. I didn't want to burn the potatoes or something. And um, it didn't go fast enough. They, they th started throwing toys at me. So um, you can get some um, riots uh, behavior too. So um, actually, <laughs> And uh, studying behavior means the riot didn't get really the channel to be expressed. And um, we need riots to, to get creative, to keep our creativity alive. So um, usually you get in, into situations, and I like, I'm creative too, I like to get really in time pressure to get um, more um, <coughs> out of my creativity. So um, yeah. I, I use my own pressure, I use my own stress to, to get more out of it. Um, yeah, I think I have, yeah, the London riots. Um, that's actually just an example for, for not having a channel to um, get all the anger and all the emotions, the negative emotions into, into productivity. And um, yeah. Um, this child's a little older, um, and <laughs> the heroes, the personal heroes we're looking for, the response we get, and the relationship we build, like the parents, um, the mother at first, and the parents, the dad, and all the relatives around them um, afterwards, school, kindergarten, I'm, I'm, I have to talk about kindergarten first, um, is what we need for bonding, for socializing, for social experiments for, um, and these are great. Children have a great creativity in experimenting with social interactions. 
And uh, looking at that, if you, if you watch them, maybe outside when you go shopping or something, or with your um, relatives, um, you see how creative they can get with interactions. And it's almost like um, adults do. I, I wouldn't be so m manipulative to uh, anybody else as children actually are. So, um, yeah. Um, what's happening when we, when we get enraged, when children get loud and get enraged, they, um, be, they're being judged as negative. And uh, what happens then is we get into competition. Like um, our normal um, nursing behaviors are um, that people um, tend to, to judge over negative behavior as um, or right or loudness as negative. And um, responding negative to the children is always um, manipulating them into competition. Um, the biggest competition we face is actually school because we, um, we uh, have the system of, um, sorry, so, <laughs> we have the system of, of um, voting, it's not voting, what is it? Um, rates. rates. We are ranking children and um, actually that's not helping to cooperate, to collaborate. And actually, that's what we use as um, competence for later on in work. We need team people. We need people that are able to, to interact uh, socially better than having competition in a team. Um, yeah, that's a nice picture I, I took of, a, um, of an artist, and I think it shows good and well how we relate to things and people. When p uh, children grow older, they um, relate to, to uh, people, not to things. When they ha have the age of five and six, um, they relate to objects. And what happens is that they don't have the variety as with social interactions. Um, Due to that, um, the creativity lowers. There was an experiment um, with children in school um, with the age of um, up to eight, and they discovered that creativity and the actually finding solutions and the skill to find solutions lowers with every year they are in school. Um, this is Similar to Gardner, I took the one of uh, Rudolf Steiner because it's a little more creative, a little col more colorful for me. Um, the 12 senses, it's not five senses physically they um, experiment with, it's 12 senses. They have a sense of life, they have a sense of thought, children. They have a sense of heat, they, they are little philo philosophers, so um, if you actually ask them, you get a response to topics. And that's practically re new, relative new, because um, years ago, 30 years ago, they didn't get a response um, asking children. What we do today is include children in design processes. So um, you get a response, you get an answer to what they like, what they dislike, what they would like to have changed, and that's pretty pretty cool. So um, we actually get a more, um, a better insight into what the future could bring faster. Yeah, curiosity. That's what I want to keep up with the children. And um, I did my research in uh, my own um, arts classes for children and um, children museums. And what I found out in my arts classes was um, I had the children there um, not really being creative for themselves. They wanted to have a goal they could design for, they could paint for, they could do something for. And, um, oh, it's the wrong one here. Um, and actually, um, they waited for, for being judged by their parents, by the other kids in the class. So um, what I wanted them to do, and it actually took 
about nine months until they understood what I wanted, um, that I didn't ask for any, for any uh, result that could be judged. I just wanted them to, to do that for themselves and play, do playful experience, experiments with their creativity. So um, it took quite a while until they under understood I, I'm not the one that judges them. And uh, I asked the parents not to judge them too. So um, they, they just followed their path and that's what I wanted. I wanted them to, to find their own way of expression, find their own way of how to, to uh, get their um, senses open and find solutions randomly. Um, in children museums you often get um, displays with, um, where you can interact with um, science. Um, so you have the, the uh, um, yeah, science as background to, to um, play with. So it's a playful experience for the children and that's what I wanted to see, what actually tackles them to interact with. Um, do they go there alone? Do they have to do it with, with uh, other people? Or um, how, how is the, the access to, to how do they approach what they want to find out and what's the possibility to, to find out in the, in, the, uh, in the touch points there? It's very nice to, to actually see in the children museums how children re react on, on these um, interfaces and uh, not electronic, but very... Um, you, you find many um, kinder museums where they have some, some elderly men actually creating these um, touch points where um, they rebuild something or make something out of wood and, and actually trash to show them how waves function, how um, sound waves go, how water waves go and actually Wonderful displays. Um, I support um, Design for Change in Germany. They um, are building um, up a uh, network for um, workshops in school. And uh, what we try to is get um, change from within schools. So include children, inclu include everybody and every sense we can get to redesign classes and make that for children more creative, more interesting, more um, yeah, vital <coughs> to, to experiment with and the topics and uh, find for themselves what um, they actually want to work on. Um, this comes from India. Um, it's a design student that, um, that um, founded the school, uh, Riverside School in India, and she uh, had many projects um, that already got social impact in, the, in India. If you, see, you can see here um, how much impact they already had. It's, I think it's 15 years now that she founded the first school, and um, it has great efforts in, in India. So we're trying to implement this here in Germany and um, planning plan um, workshops here in school. So don't fade to grey. It's um, a call for creativity and it's a call for um, a different thinking of how we educate the future um, employees. Thank you. <laughs>